Mike's mom, and Josh's mom, and my mom. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to two, a very special episode of Two Guys and Some Horror. It's the first guest episode we've had in a long time. And, you know, we, we here at the show, we always try to not be cheesy. We always we always try to avoid all cheese. Usually the movie is scary enough, except for, like, in the case of Thanks Killing 3 or anything that's just absolute cheese or, you know, 90% of the movies we may watch. But in this case, I feel like this movie is actually pretty scary. And as I, I'm, I'm one of the hosts here, I'm Clark. Hi, how are you doing? I'm gonna, let me introduce my good friend who is always here on the show, Mr. Curtis. Curtis, how are you doing today? Hello. And Mr. Mimic, welcome like you, back, buddy. You How said, are you? You said avoid cheese, but like, what about nacho cheese, and like <laughs> cheddar Warming. cheese? Uh, I'm doing good. Good. Glad to be back. Welcome. Glad to, to, glad to have you support. back. Yeah. No, it's it, it's great. And we're we're talking about uh, Mimic. You picked the movie today uh, that we're we're reviewing. It was uh, well, I guess talking about more so than reviewing, mm-hmm. which is the Blair Witch Project, which is a which is the first uh people think of this as kind of like the first shaky cam film which which actually is cannibal holocaust which came out in 1980 but this movie actually reinvigorated the kind of the found footage genre it came out and uh well it was released in the july 30th 1999 according to imdb here in the united states it was it has a budget of about sixty thousand dollars which makes absolute sense considering that there, there were three actors who used their first and last names throughout the entirety of the film going across and camping. And it had an opening weekend of about $1.5 million for about a budget of 60000 You know, that's, that's a win. And worldwide, it was about a uh, worldwide gross, about $248 million, maybe about $249 million. Uh, production company was Hoxon Films, and it was directed by Mr. Daniel Merrick and Eduardo Sanchez. I uh, mimic. I, I got a question for you. Why did you pick this film for us to kind of watch? So, um, I live. Uh, I have a cabin up in the woods, sort of, but not cabin in the woods. Um, and the first time I watched Blair Witch Project, I was up at my cabin with my dad. We were just hanging out. I was like sixteen or seventeen at the time, so I thought I was really tough. Um, Anyway, crazy windstorm is like happening outside. So we're watching this scary movie about being trapped in the woods, being hunted by a witch or your friends. And uh, this crazy windstorm's going outside. I was a little spooked after the movie got over. I was like, okay, whatever, you know, just hanging out. So I was like watching, I was like watching comedy specials on Netflix uh, just to like relax myself. All of a sudden outside my house, there's a huge slam. All the lights go dark. So I'm at a cabin in the woods. I just watched a movie about dying in the woods and a the power's gone out and there's a huge slam outside. So I sprint. I literally jump over the couch and sprint to my dad's bedroom. I'm like, we have to get out of here now. <laughs> like I shake him awake. My dad is fucking like in his underwear. What the hell just happened? And like I'm running out of the house. <laughs> Turns out like a tree had been knocked over on our power lines. But I'm like, I literally thought I was going to die. I was going to get killed. <laughs> I mean, which to be clear, if you didn't get up and go and grab your dad and bring him out in his whitey tidies, you would have died because it wouldn't have been a yeah. tree. It would have been yeah. something serious. A ghost. And like the I said, I was like witch. 16 or 17. Like I played football and lifted weights all through high school. I thought I was fucking tough as shit. I was that night. I was like, like shitting myself that <laughs> night. So. <laughs> So I don't know well, why, but my mind went like the Santa Claus, Tim Allen getting pulled out of his bed because it rose <laughs> such a clatter, right? I don't know why, but I picture you as the I, little kid running to get your dad and pulling yeah, it Yeah, there was about That's to great. be a rose, such a splatter of my fucking blood all over the walls. Well Oof. done, sir. Uh, I've been waiting for this story for like six months now. I just want listeners <laughs> to know. I, I, didn't le- I didn't ask Mimic to tell me the story beforehand. I wanted to know. I, I wanted to hear the story fresh. Uh, and it was worth it. This is that's great. Um, I, I don't I do cabins. I don't do cabins in the woods. I don't like going to cabins. Uh, Clark sent us a picture of a cabin that that's exactly the kind of feeling I get when I think of going to that's, a cabin uh, in the woods. Mimics cabin, actually. Yep, that, that's exactly what it looks like. After the tree hit um, it or before? Put a put a picture up there for oh, the for the people on YouTube. Oh, I will. <laughs> Look at that. 
That's so first time cabin. I saw Blair Witch Project and first time I played that game, Slender, was both up in my cabin in the woods. Uh, neither were good decisions. No. I love Slender. That's a fun game back in the day. That was jump yeah. scare. That was when everybody was putting jump scares and everything, though. Two things real quick. One, about the budget. So uh, it's a fun fact for you. This held the Guinness Book of World Record for every dollar spent, they earned over $10,000 back, which is pretty amazing. Like we were talking about the the amount of money. Um it also it held the the record for highest grossing independent film of all time until October of two thousand two, when it was surpassed by My Big Fat Greek Wedding. Right. So it held it for three years <laughs> until that film came out, which by the way is a great film. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, that movie's an anomaly. My Big Fat Greek Wedding. We can really talk is. about that another time because it really it's a horror is. in its own right. <laughs> Just um, kidding. But yeah, no, it's great. And then the second thing I wanted to bring up is. I actually watched, so how I found the Blair Witch Project was back when I was probably about nine or 10 years old, my parents had owned it on VHS um, and I was a big movie um, watcher. I loved to just go into the room. Uh, so we had a living room It had wood panel, panel walls, shag carpet, uh, and these bookcases. And the bookcases were filled with just VHS stacks after stacks after stacks. And I would always just go in find a movie, pull it out, never ask anyone, never, never, I don't know what these half the movies were. It's probably when I first started falling in love with film. And one day I just picked up the Blair Witch Project, threw it on, uh, watched it. It was a cold, wintry day. Uh, and I don't think I've watched another movie for probably a good month to make sure that uh, I never watch a movie that frightening again at that age. It was, it was really good. Um, so I love your story, Mimic. I think it's great. And I can, I can definitely see how, uh, this film would put that kind of lasting memory on you. Yep. I, I, I'm kind of terrified of uh, situations like that, but there's when I'm sleeping in the woods, I like at night, whenever I'm out camping, like if I'm backpacking, I'm hyper aware, like I'm paying attention to the noises outside. Like I, there, there are bears out. There are uh, potentially mountain lions, uh, which usually won't attack people. Uh, and I go backcountry hi hiking, uh, backpacking to get to my campsite, just like in this movie all the time. So I definitely get the fear of having somebody go up to your tent and just starting like hitting it and shaking it. Because at that point, you're you're pretty much prone. You're pretty much un unable to defend yourself because if that tent falls apart and you're inside it, you're not going to be able to easily get through all of the uh, whatever the material the tent's made out of. Uh, it's yeah. terrifying. So... This I mean, movie kind of like invoked a little bit of fear for me as well. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for you, I was going to say, especially with like your recent camping trips, like oh. I don't go camping that often. In fact, I haven't been camping probably in five, ten years. I don't know. I can remember the last time I've actually been camping. Uh, but the idea, you know, someone who does camp a little bit more often, that that can be uh, you could put yourself in those shoes very easily. Right. And and definitely have that fear uh, brought out of you. Interestingly enough, the, like so like the whole story, like this whole film is just it's so well done. Um, the director and writer had so much fun doing this. And so the story, I don't know. Did we we didn't hit the story just yet, right? No, I don't think so. So the the idea or the premise, the whole story is that these three film students uh, are traveling to Maryland uh, in, in the forest to film this documentary on the local Blair Witch legend. Um, unfortunately bad things happen to them, which will break down throughout the, hopefully break down throughout this episode as we talk about it. But that, that's the idea. So these three kids, they get together, uh, the girl, Heather, um, and her two friends, uh, played by Michael and Josh, they go out, um, and yeah, they just, I mean, they start in the town, the little town, um, just outside of the forest area that they're going through. They start talking to people. I, I found that to be really interesting, like the, the whole setup, especially if you understand yeah. how the legend was built, right? Mm -hmm. Well, this is a film you have to watch at least twice to really get where they are and where they're going, because the first time you watch it, it's like, okay, they're talking about, they're building up this legend about this witch who who comes and kills people like every 50 years or so to not scare them in the woods. And then you kind of get into the lore behind that where there was like this crazy man in a cabin who murdered like seven kids and buried their bodies like right there in his house there and then at the end they're in that house and i didn't even recognize that until like the second time i watched it in my prep mm -hmm. well yeah it so is. it's a 
it's pre- it's pretty sad because in the movie we never actually get the Blair Witch portion of the story, right? Like we never get. Basically, there was a scene when when Heather's in the tent. It's late at night. She one of the times, and she comes running out, and she's like screaming, you know, what the f is that? What the f is that? The cameraman was supposed to pan a specific direction, and they had a Blair Witch female in a white dress standing there waiting to be seen. That never got shot. They, they never didn't. reshot it. Yeah, I think the mystery maybe I'm, is a little I'm glad bit they better. Didn't. I prefer not having an actual like spiritual creature. And then the sequels, they do bring stuff in there like that. But we never yeah. see anything supernatural. It's just them kind of being in a loop, being lost, and being mad at each other the entire film. Everybody's yelling. Everybody hates one another. Everybody's messed up. It's... It's really like if you're in a in a survival situation with you and two of your your friends, what do you do if one of them throws a map in the creek and doesn't tell you and the other two are blaming each other for taking the map or the situation where you're looking at a compass and you're going south, but you keep going across the same creek over and over again? Yeah, I basically do everything that they didn't do or the opposite of everything they did. Uh, cause wow, did they really, really not have enough boy scout training between them? Um, but I mean, <laughs> there's obviously like, was, you know, was there supernatural and they're like every five seconds when they're lost in the woods, they're talking about changing directions and it's like, they keep sitting down, you know, are they actually in a root loop or did they actually just sit down, then walk back the wrong way? Right. Like, I, I... I like that. I mean, I there was they don't explain anything really, no. which is fine. And I think we can just learn from the very first night where they're in the like motel in the in the town. The fact that they were just doing shots of Johnny Walker Red that tells you the kind of decision making these people had uh, ahead of time. So they didn't have any hope <laughs> of survival. Mean... I wouldn't be against doing that if I were about to go on a camping trip, but I especially shoot fucking really bad scotch, especially if you're thinking about investigating something supernatural, right? So there are so many aspects of this film. You could watch it with a purely no supernatural aspect. These are just three idiots yeah. going out in the woods, getting lost uh, and concocting some story, right? Then there's the actual supernatural aspect, which is like, what is this Blair Witch phenomena that is going around this legend? And then we get in the town, we get that little story about the man in the house who killed the seven boys. Those are three different aspects, really, of the film that come together and really tell a gripping story and, and kind of spook the shit out of you. Um, that was when they started their hiking trip, when they came across the river with those two old guys, uh, credited as old man with glasses, or fisherman with glasses, and uh, a short fisherman. Well, <laughs> but... there's the old guy in town, too, the... Um... Like the super who old tells guy. them of like I think Rustin Parr or something yeah was the name of the 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 dude who killed the seven kids yeah by taking them two at a time making one face the corner killing one then killing the other which is so um, good so the good. fishermen were talking about the one guy who didn't believe anything the other guy who saw the quote white mist rising out of the um water there was like the lady with a kid and actually like that part uh so they're talking to like just some townswoman with her her child and she's talking about the scary stories about the myth of the blair witch that her grandma would tell her i love the and, toddler like, grabbing her yes yeah, the, the camera's shaky and the toddler's like grabbing her saying like no 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 no, no. it's no. like that's like really good as a tension um, setter like yeah yeah um, no and she's like don't worry what i'm telling them is not true and then she mouths to them it's all true yeah i'm yeah. curious how much of the interviews in town were actors, right? And and if they had any of those that were just kind of, I don't know, uh, ad hoc, just kind of guerrilla style filmed, pulled up random person on because the, because there's the guy who like totally looks like an actor, uh, had the beanie on or whatever, and and was delivering lines as if he had read them from a paper, but then the lady with the kid, the kid's definitely not an actor. Like you can you can tell that just by the kid's action they're just Mm -hmm. they're the lady's kid but then the The lady wanted to go yeah and the lady is telling a story almost as if it's something she's told before that she's heard from someone else before right 
because remember the Blair Witch legend was planted by Daniel and Eduardo uh, four years prior to them going and filming this movie, filming this found footage film. They started this idea of the Blair Witch legend, you know, years prior, and they and they kind of built this from the ground up. They started spreading rumors, telling people random things like, "Hey, have you ever heard of this?" Then they set up the the three actors uh, and a film crew to go out and actually film the movie. So it's really interesting to see and try and pick apart like who who's in on it, who's not in on it, who has, you know, did the diner, the waitress ladies, did they know anything about it or were they just random people that they talked to? Mm-hmm. They're all credited, like their names are all credited. So I, I would assume that they got some some sort of monetary or value or something because they have lines. And but that can all come after, guild. right? Yeah, but they still have to pay them. They still have to do all that. So I don't think it was all random, especially if this was all written up. Uh, maybe some of the people they just walked up to and started talking to. But like you got the one guy, she's like, do you believe in the supernatural? And he's like, nope. Are you a religious man? Yep. All right, then. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wrote that down because I couldn't. I, I don't know. That one made me laugh. Like, what? why even why include him if he's. This is where I, I still, in my mind, I mean, some of these people had to have no idea. I get that they're on the list of credits. That's fine. You have to do that if you put anyone's face on film. You have to credit them. Whether they got paid, you don't have to pay someone, right? So Actors Guild, not Actors Guild, I don't know any of those people on that list, especially the ones without pictures, right? We don't tend to talk about people who are faceless. But those interviews, some of them are very believable. Some of them are very, they feel organic. And if that's yeah. an actor amazing well done hats off to you if that's fine but i have i have a suspicion that some of those interviews probably were totally just walked up to someone and asked them a question or was sitting in a diner and asked the girl have you ever heard of blair witch uh you know my sister might have went to a school named blair something like that's an actual (laughs) fun fact the blair witch project it's named after uh eduardo's sister went to a school blair high so like that's legitimate and i think they gave her the line to feed it right but some of the other ones just are a little bit more interesting to me. That's all. I thought that, I thought it was really good. I, I thought everybody did a good job. I never at once was my suspension of disbelief broken. I think um, the guy the with acting. the beanie beat me up. No offense, Mimic. The guy with the beanie in the Sorry. in the film uh, kind of made me feel like his delivery wasn't authentic. It felt more provided, like he's reading from a sheet kind of a thing. But that was the only one that I really would have had any any kind of beef with. Um, I don't even remember that. I don't. Who played Mary though? Because I I don't. Mary's the crazy crackhead lady, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't see her in anywhere. Or Patricia Deku. There you okay. Go. <laughs> she she did a phenomenal job of playing like a crazy lady. Like <laughs> great work. Uh, she was the art technician actually. For I was the gonna movie. say she felt like she was a uh, part of the crew. You know what I mean? If yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. She was the art technician, and. Uh, it was interesting because like they, they talked to this 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 crazy lady who was apparently abducted by or was spirited away by the Blair Witch in yeah, some she got, means like, or another. Approached by the Blair Witch while her dad was out hunting or something. Yeah, and she uh, from there like she tells them all these things and they're just like she's nuts because she tells them that she's a ballerina, a movie <laughs> producer, a yeah. scientist, and a historian writing a history book on American history. And so they they basically disregard everything she says. Well, I think it's funny. There's a quote later in the movie about um, when they Esau. find the little the gravesite with the yeah. stones. Uh, Heather the stones. Heather says like, "What did Mary say about the the stones?" And the guys like, "I don't know." And then Heather says, "I wasn't listening because she was a lunatic." It's like you're fucking hunting a a supernatural entity. Like you should listen to the crazy people. All, the all ones. of the people, crazy, not crazy. Listen yeah. to it all. Well, she said that the the Blair Witch was like in the form of a hairy, half human, half animal beast, and she was like talking about like how furry it was. But when they're talking about the stones, we don't really get much. She just kept like trying to pull it out. Well, they also yeah. reference something that they do really well, I think, in this film is that they reference footage that you don't see, things that were cut out, right? So, like, there's conversations that they reference that we never actually got to see the the real meat of. Because um, mm-hmm. Mary doesn't really mention the rocks when they're interviewing her, right? 
Mm-hmm. But no. she, but they specifically say, "What did Mary say about the rock?" So there was more conversation that they cut out of the, the documentary footage. Um, Maybe it was just kind of lost in the found footage. They just didn't have it. I mean, that's yeah. the Maybe great part about a found off footage because they're like, "This isn't going anywhere." Turn yeah. the camera off. We can chalk it that's up. That's what to I would just, have done. She's crazy. Get out of here. Let her talk. But don't yeah, film this. don't waste. Don't waste the film. And yeah. technically, this movie was filmed in 1994 were the documentary portion that's what they that's what they claim i don't know right if that's the case or not that's interesting too yeah i know a lot of a lot of crazy people and then they actually get to the woods so what did you think about the likability i want to hear from your both both of your perspectives on our three main characters so the likability of these characters from start to finish how how did you feel kind of throughout the film about them because a lot of times we're set to to feel a certain way about a character but with a film like this it's a documentary you you're not supposed to be attached to these three people you're supposed to be attached to the story right mm-hmm. but we do get yeah. attached so i'm just curious what your guys opinion is i want to hear mimic uh i think both the guys are kind of cagey from the start but like that's like you know part of it's like two guys as good friends i think really josh is the only character that's actually likable until near the end till near the end because you know he's like a little more calm about things and like when they start to get lost he's you know he gets frustrated but rightfully frustrated um like in i don't know none of them are overly likable like i'm not really rooting for any character or any of the the three actors on screen uh mike sucked heather was i think heather had like this mindset of like what she has to do to be a director and like that's all she has um but like not everybody's leadership style works the same for everyone so like i think for her like she led a lot of the the downturn herself um and she she was just kind of a bitch i'll just i've been skirting around saying it that way but that's in my note heather is really bitchy End quote. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna politely kinda ha- I have a different opinion on, on this. I, I like I like ish. I kinda like ish Heather, but I think she's a bit too stubborn. Um and that's kind of why they got lost is because she was stubborn and they didn't really have a group conversation to talk about the map and plan things out together as opposed to this is where we're going, it's gonna be ninety minutes, okay, it's two more hours, okay, it's another three hours tops. And them just getting frustrated and more frustrated. Mike has the tendency to freak out right away. Josh was kind of just burying it inside. And you get to a point where both Heather and Josh are blaming each other for the map. And it was actually Mike who threw it out in the first place. Uh, so that Mike is an absolute moron. Yeah. But he becomes more likable near the end. He starts out kind of likable. Then he turns into kind of a... This guy's freaking out and he's making impulsive decisions and he's really fucking it up for the group. And then near the end, he's actually there to comfort her and kind of he's he's less reactive once Josh is gone. But Josh is fine up until where he's actively abusing Heather, like emotionally abusing her, shitting on her, making her cry, telling her that they're the reason that they're all lost and continuously attacking her with the camera at that point, Mike's like, just leave him alone. He's going to keep attacking you. Yeah, there's like that yeah, one I... minute. I think it's like a minute solid of him just filming her against the tree. She's just crying. And yeah. he's just he's just constantly just barrading her with like different reasons why she sucks. Give me more. Yeah. I need more emotion. Well, you're not doing this right. This is why we're lo-. like, he's just freaking hammering her, man, with like, like you said, so much verbal abuse. That he is just emotionally wrecking her, quote after yeah, quote. Yeah, but I think, quote. I mean, it's like bad. I said, I'm not rooting for anybody in this film, but right. I think that's yeah. like a lot of Josh's reaction to how stubborn Heather had been as the director up to this point. Because like, we see the final shots, final shots from the movie, but how many times has Heather made them reshoot like the rock piles or mm-hmm. reshoot scenes with the river? Um, you know, so... I think what Josh is doing is like really going at Heather on purpose. And like, it's not good. Um, 
it's not healthy. No, it's not a healthy relationship. But he's like, he's what he's trying doing is to make her feel all the things that she's made him and Mike feel over the, the course of the trip so far. And like, none of the people are good. And if you listen to fan theories, Josh is really not good. Um, but shed some light on that. Know. What do you mean? Fan theories? Well, so there's a lot of like conspiracies around the original Blair Witch Project where either just Josh or Josh and Mike were going out there to kill Heather in the first place. Oh, what? You didn't know that? No. <laughs> That's awesome. I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't go dive in. I don't do a lot of uh, fan fiction diving, um, especially when a film is so like to me, this film is just so this is what it is. It doesn't really like hide a lot. But like now, ah, shit, now I'm going to have to go look for that. That's amazing. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the fan theories are wrong. Um, But there is like, because we never get the payoff of that shot of the supernatural being on screen, there is the mystery and how that leads to like, is this, was this a plot? Um, And there's, I mean, there's notes throughout that I have about a couple other things like throughout the whole thing, but like, you know, was Josh intentionally sabotaging Heather from the beginning? And like that scene and could Mike. also make more sense. Like he is trying to break her down. I think like the a lot of the stuff states that like Heather and Josh used to date. She broke up with him. She's dating like, Mike now. No, I don't think I would hope she's not dating Mike. So, but, so during casting, uh, Josh's character, one of the characters, I think it was Josh's, was supposed to have this like infatuation and interest in heather not that they had dated but this idea that like they literally asked him in his audition to look at her picture and say beautiful like things about her that that he likes that she's beautiful her hair is nice her eyes are pretty whatever like they wanted they started building this psyche in his mind for filming that he was infatuated okay. with her and obsessed with her but none of it came to fruition in the movie there was no love interest they cut like they didn't do any of that. They cut all of it. Um, there was some there was some cuddling and there was some there was some friendliness like near the end, but it was like a survival based thing. And I don't know yeah. if there was actually any romantic interest, but if there was a shipment, I would have shipped Mike and Heather near the end. <laughs> yeah, um, probably. I don't think there is much room for shipping in the movie, but no, I you know. once they get into the house and you see Mike facing the corner, that's when it ends. Yeah. Ooh, still such a creepy shot um i'll throw up a still of that actually right now while we're talking because i think that's a it's a very like i don't know that that shot of him just standing in the corner with the found footage there is probably one of the most chilling shots in the film to me um once you understand the the man killing people and yeah. making them face the corner mm-hmm. yeah so for me the characters uh just to give my two cents real fast is i i felt like right off the bat i loved all three characters the camaraderie yeah. that they had picking each other up making jokes about oh we don't get to see a mom you know that kind of stuff like i thought it was really it was really great i thought they did a nice job by the end of this film i was cool with all three of them dying i was tired of their shit i felt like each of them took their own turn to be bitchy moody angry rude to the other person um i think they all shared that load because at some point in time you know josh is consoling heather and then later on mike is consoling heather and then later on heather's losing her mind and neither the guy are consoling either person (laughs) um (laughs) if if anything mike's just ignoring it while josh is just berating her but anyways like the whole purpose was for them to just be mad and like there was supposed to be this tension between each of them Mm -hmm. to where it's just not gonna work out i i I like that they did that and I, i think it's just very human I just feel like we have three very human characters. None of them are perfect. They're very just standard people trying to figure out the best way they can to survive. And they're getting frustrated and they're reacting to their frustrations. So I, I don't hate any, I don't hate any of the characters. I I think they're just very real and we get to see who they are before they're in a life or death situation that none of them are prepared for. Yeah. Right. No, I think that's a really good way to put it. All the characters are very real. Um, and I think that, you know, that plays into a lot of like the post release hype of the movie and why it became successful. It was like, was it actually real? There was like, you know, underground guerrilla marketing about what actually happened. This is 
a quote unquote documentary um, about, you know, something. And before people this is knew still, not to believe everything they read on the internet. You this know. is still in the early stages of the internet too. Yeah. Back when we had like nothing but straight up HTML before CSS was even standardized. Uh, which basically, for those of you who aren't tech savvy, that means that we had really bad websites that were basically just text links and like images that took like maybe 10 minutes to download mm -hmm. it very slow. And for you to find information on a movie like this, it mostly just be rumors spread online on message boards. Like this is actually real. And kids so, in school would be like, this movie is actually, this actually happened. They actually found this footage. So this Just film similar to cannibal Holocaust is one of the first films to be marketed on the internet though. Like they actually built a website, yeah. blairwitch.com just for this movie. And that was primarily their number one way of marketing was the internet. Um, so to some extent, yes, the internet was pretty, you know, early on in its stages, but it was a widely successful marketing campaign that they ran on the internet uh, back in 99, which is pretty cool to see. And to Mimic's well, point, everybody... talking... Oh, go ahead. No, no, this is... Yeah, yeah, to your point, like, everybody had the internet. I'm not saying that. No, no, I'm they saying it was... It. That's their only... That was their huge push on marketing was the internet. So yeah. it's it's amazing to see what they were able to do with such an early stage of what we know as the internet, right? Today, you can put anything on yeah. the internet. We're on the internet. You're listening to us on the internet. Um, yeah. But to Mimic's point, when it came to marketing of like, is this real or not? Is it a fabricated story? Is it is this real? When the movie hit the Canes Festival, they had the cast, the three main leads, listed as still missing and not found. They put up flyers leading up to the Canes Festival, like missing persons flyers that ultimately got pulled down because an executive producer actually got kidnapped. So it was found in bad taste and they pulled them all down the, the following day. But I mean, the, the marketing that they went through to get this film out there is like, it's insane to think about. Um, and I definitely felt like it was part of, you know, it's success, a huge success. I mean, watching this movie as a kid, I remember still going to school or talking to my friends and being like, have you seen the Blair Witch project? Of course, most of them probably hadn't. Um, yeah. I wasn't allowed to watch movies like this. No, yeah. I mean, I probably shouldn't have been able to... My parents probably would have been upset with me knowing I watched this when I watched it. They were, they probably would have wanted me to wait a few years, would be my guess. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time I've watched this movie all the way through. Um, twice. That's cool to hear. Yeah. The 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 first time I watched it, I kind of like was watching it with something else in the background. and I just kind of skipped through to see what was scary. I wanted to go to the scary scene, and I didn't see anything scary. So I was like, yeah, I think I want, I think I want to watch this. So I just kind of push to decide and watch something else but i'm glad that you picked this movie mimic yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm very happy that you did i've been waiting to do this movie no i think it's i think it's fucking scary i like it we've seen like more of a resurgence in found footage since like wreck and paranormal activity in like the late 2000s oh, sure. um and like you guys talked about wreck on the podcast if i remember correctly mm -hmm. yeah uh if i recollect correctly <laughs> ha, ha, ha. right and we're not going to uh, watch quarantine because yeah, we've already seen it movie. or cor um, corniness teen from mimic over here that was a terrible yeah. joke i'll leave it though, <laughs> so everyone can see how bad i am um but like and you know also like vhs uh you know some really good found footage movies lately um or you know i'd say lately 2000 i think paranormal activity came out in 2009 uh which is 11 years ago at this point um but it's like crazy. you know it's a when you do it right it's so good um because of like the shaky camp style it really like sets a tension and pace to the film that like isn't the same as like a standard Hollywood um, single camp sh shoot. Um, and, you know, I just think it's it's it stands the test of time. It's like it's still scary today. So I mean, yeah, I want to get a group of friends together, go out, we go camping. I bring a portable 
you know, projector with a projector screen or a sheet, whatever we want to use. And we watched this shit in the middle of the woods while camping. Yeah, I'm and, sick uh, that you know, weekend. I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait for everyone to lose lose their bowels and have to change their underwear. It'll be a great time. Is this why we go out camping? <laughs> Is, I mean, it's, it's the only reason to get me to go out camping. I think realistically, I don't camp. So I'll take you out camping if we watch this. Yeah. If you want to watch this. Yeah. See? I'll take you car camping like it's you're not going to be scared of anything really cuz there's going to be other campers near you. Oh no no, we're yeah. going to we're going to go to we're going to drive to Colorado, pick up Mimic <laughs> and then like, find some random ass place to go that has a let's ton go to of Estes trees. Park. Estes yeah, Park just, in Colorado. Let's just go camp right next to the the Overlook Hotel from the Shining. There's some yes. backcountry uh <laughs> I can show you some backcountry places down there. Backcountry. Go hike up. Hike up about 10 miles to the campsite. No thanks. Set up like camp. Ride. Yeah, well, if you really want to enjoy the Blair Witch Project, kind of have to. Got to do it the I'm right not way. Dragging a generator yeah. ten miles. You don't have to. Hey. I'll carry it for you. I'll even carry yeah, your man, pack. Like it's you know it's about a half day trip. It's <laughs> not going to be too bad. Leave early in the morning. We'll get there around. I don't know. Nine nine a.m. Get to the campsite around four p.m. You guys can take our Vienna sausages cabin. and our marshmallows. Well, we'll eat the same things they ate. And our Johnny Red, yeah. <laughs> and our Johnny no. Red, yeah. No, we'll drink something. I we'll have to drink it. that before we start the hike. It'll all burn off. Got to do it before. Yeah, you got to do it before the hike, mimic. And then when we get there, we'll have something better. Yeah, I don't I smoke cigarettes, so the only we'll way have to get, get something else. It's no. the only way to get mimic to go on the hike is to get him to drink a whole bottle of something. I'll go on hikes. Uh, you know, I got bad feet, bad knees, and a bad back, but I'll go on hikes. Shit. Now, hiking is not the hiking is not the concern there. It's um, <laughs> a dragging a generator ten miles into the woods, uh, and B. You wouldn't need a generator, just a laptop. Yeah, I like guess we saved on it. We could do that. Fair enough. Still no. Still no. Uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, next scene in the movie, guys. Uh, the end. I want to talk about the end. I think that's the best place to wrap up kind of the conversation about the movie as a whole, unless you guys have other areas you want to go first. No, I just like that they use the actor's real names. Like Heather Donahue was Heather Donahue in the film. Yeah. So I think the only one who didn't get like their actual name was, no, I mean, they called them they it. by their short names. Yeah. Mike, Josh. So yeah, nope. Everyone, Heather's the only one who has her full name, full name. Well, the I only mean, scene before we get to the end I want to talk about is the when body. we find all the like stick figures. Oh, yeah. Because right? um, I think that's like scary as shit. Um, and like I think that goes into or plays actually against the like Josh killed Heather or Josh killed Heather and Mike or Josh and Mike killed Heather like thing like those guys aren't that smart um, to to climb up in the trees, not make sounds, like craft that many stick figures. And like Josh actually says, um, in that in that sequence, he's like, "Rednecks aren't this creative," which I thought is interesting. Um, and I do think it's interesting as well that like. The first night in the woods, Heather says she sleeps like a log, like she yeah. doesn't wake up for anything. Um, so like it can kind of like sow that scene of like, okay, we can kind of sneak around and not wake Heather up anytime they're reacting to like sounds outside of the camp or the tent. I think it's the guys waking Heather up um, ahead of time and then like getting the cameras. I will say they mobilize incredibly fast to record see sequences um get their cameras and audio equipment up and running um so that's i mean that's pretty good but it's i i think you know like how high in the tree some of those things were just how many there were i think that plays against the yeah the human element of like them possibly being the killers mm -hmm. um but it is i mean it is scary I, what the hell would i do if i like walked outside of my campsite or was just like walking around the the woods and i saw a bunch of like voodoo totem things um yeah you'd probably yeah, nope be... nope and go home yeah 
one of the scariest things for me that I wanted to talk about was when she finds the little bundles of sticks and she opens one of them up. But uh, she opens it up and she sees like the body parts and blood. And she's like freaking out. She's like, I have to wash my hands. I have to wash my hands. I have to wash my hands. There are witchcraft inspired, like this whole film, things that are done throughout here, the the sticks in mm. the trees, the the stones in a pile, the sticks wrapped up with, you know, dead stuff inside of it is um, like there's actual real witchcraft or, or witchery things that that stuff spawned from. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know much about witchcraft. The stick man. Uh, yeah. But even the stick man himself, like all that stuff derives from something that they researched and found on on whatever they were doing i don't know it's just interesting right. to me i wasn't sure if that's where you were going with it so i was just no 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 when she like there's body parts in there and she's like freaking out because like there's mm -hmm. there's like a flannel shirt and i thought that was josh when i was first yeah, watching it i thought too. it was josh and i wasn't sure so that and then watching it the second time i wasn't really sure if it was or not but um when they talk when you cut when drop right before this too like remember when you said there are things that we don't have information yeah like josh mentions that she took one of the witch's trinkets and then she ran after them the witch so that may be the part where they ran from the witch that we never got in the actual film yeah. sure yeah well they didn't have the camera gear out in time to film it right yeah i think i think the the mixture between the lore the the, the general lore that we get right off the bat that um Eduardo and uh, the other director, Daniel, that they came up with. I think that's great. I think that has an amazing base layer. But then you have like fan fiction that makes you think, what about Josh? Because then my mind starts going, okay, there could be spiritual activity, you know, paranormal activity. There could be Josh is in on it. You could have Josh planning with Mike. You could have Josh planning with Mike, planning with another friend who's out there already in the woods, hanging shit in the trees for hours. I don't know. Like your mind starts to go. You could build a thousand different scenarios that play out. And I, th oh man, this, the movie just, I don't know. Like you said, it ages very well. Made in 99. It still creeps me out, you know, in 2020. It's, it's really good. But there is nothing better in this movie to me than the ending so josh disappears we don't know where he is right and then we get mike and heather are they asleep when they start hearing him yelling for help or were they walking in the dark can never remember exactly they're... how it goes i don't know but it, i think it's pitch black when we hear him mm -hmm. yeah so, i want to so just say hear him in the they're distance. like yeah, they're like at their campsite. They might not be asleep necessarily. Um, but then they grab their cameras and use them for light, essentially. They're right. Not, like At that point, they're not trying to film anything. They're trying to use the cameras for light source. It's because it's after Heather does the whole half, snotty, half face, snotty, crying. Scene. Yeah. yeah. Uh, which, I, by I, the way, is the open. I'm using that for the open before we open. So well, she has a really good line in that about. where she says, I'm scared to close my eyes and to open them. I think that's a really good line. Which movie is it that mocks it? And it's scary just movie. like this girl with like tons of snot coming scary out of her movie. nose. It's the first yeah. scary movie. I feel like that's a that one's funnier because this one, you, it's just a woman crying and she does a really good job. No, it's believable. Really? The, the yeah. comedy movie was funnier than the horror movie. <laughs> no, no, he liked the delivery better. Oh, uh, yeah. Fair enough. Because this is this uh, is we too, needed more snot. This is this is too real, man. This is that's some deep shit that you get into there. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so they they basically they can hear Josh yelling in the distance. Uh, it's pitch black. They get the cameras for the lighting. That's right, and then they just start hauling ass towards the sound. Which also, Boy Scout, that's one of the things you don't do. Don't go running in the middle of the night in pitch black darkness to the danger. You stay away from the danger. If Josh is dying, that sucks, man, for Josh. But you don't want to just go and add to the to the fire. Um, anyways, so they, they find the house in the middle of the woods. Uh, and then they begin searching this house. And inside the house, they're, they're trying to find where Josh's voice is coming from. And then they split up. 
So this is where now we're getting two different views. You're getting Heather's view and you're getting Mike's view. Mike goes in first. He heads, he hears the voice downstairs, if I remember right, and he heads downstairs. And then he heads upstairs first. He does or so she Mike, does? So Mike runs in. He's 10, 15 steps ahead of Heather. He gets into the house first. And this plays into the Mike and Josh working together theory because mm-hmm. Mike is like yelling where he's going in the house. Um, and, you know, that could be like Mike is just trying to communicate to Heather, like, hey, keep up. This is where I'm going. Or it could be he's trying to communicate to Josh, get ready for whatever we're coming. Yeah. Right. He's like, he's yelling like very clearly. And like, it's not, it's almost not panicked when he's yelling. He's, it's almost like call outs like you would in the, you know, combat scenario or something. Sure. Yeah. Um, so he runs in upstairs ahead of Heather. She runs in after him. He's like looking around. He's like, it's in the basement. And he's like, I'm going downstairs. I'm going. And Heather's like still upstairs panicking because it's fucking dark. When your only light's a video camera light, like you don't have much to go on. Yeah, I've played um, Phasmophobia. I know. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> um, so he runs back downstairs, says he's going downstairs. Heather is still upstairs. Mike's in the basement by the time Heather gets to like the main floor. Um, And then we just have Heather's camera perspective at that point, which shows she's downstairs. Goes a Mike in the corner. She's like, Mike, what are you doing? Bonk. Camera drops. Well, yeah, we get two bonks and camera drops, though, right? Because Mike's we get a bonk camera drop. Mm hmm. But he's not down. He's not knocked down. Right. Because when she comes, well, he could have been. And then whatever's going on, that's the that's the key. See, this is the key to me. You never really know what's going on down there. We're left mm-hmm. never really knowing. And I don't know if Blair Witch 2 actually answers that question. I haven't watched it. Never. I've never seen that movie. Um, so the... Go ahead. The sequels do answer that question. Although Blair Witch 2 was unretconned or was like retconned out with the Blair Witch that came out in 2016. Okay. Um, okay. So that question does get answered and it's in both films. Yes. And is it so, worth, do I need to watch Blair Witch two or should I just go to Blair Witch 20, whatever? Uh, I haven't seen the 2016 one first or fully. Okay. Uh, but I am pretty sure Blair Witch two is out of the, I don't know if I want to ruin this solely this movie. I don't know if I want to have That's anything explained. Yeah. yeah, really, I I don't think either of the sequels are important. Or this movie like, shouldn't have a sequel. You should make yeah. a different movie. Yeah. Um, I, I, the Blair Witch are, is actually based off of a a true true case of someone who is actually accused of being a witch in the 1600s at uh, Mall Dyer in Maryland. So, and there, there's kind of like uh, this weird cursed history behind it too. So if anybody wants to kind of look a uh, 17th century, sorry, uh, look into that. I, I, it's, it's a pretty scary folklore story. Like there, there was this giant 875 pound boulder that was moved from uh, like after she passed away uh, from what, like a ravine right in front of the courthouse in front of like this old 1876 jailhouse. And it's still there, and like the legend is that like she moved it, and it's cursed. See, Clark's already falling for the false legend that was built for the film. You know, he's already sucked in. Mm-hmm. He's he's ready. Ah. We're gonna we're gonna go out. We're gonna do a documentary. I I like the lore better than I like the uh, the explanations. And when when people start explaining things in movies, and they're like, "Well, this is the Blair Witch," and then they show the witch, it kind of breaks the uh, the amount of agnostic like ability i have to choose what happens or think about well maybe it's this maybe it's that and that's really the 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 entry with this film for me yeah and once you're doing the wreck thing and you start showing zombies or or the the witch herself or one of the decap old decrepit corpses because apparently they say uh that the witch is the directors or the screenwriters say like the witch is not actually there and then one of the other people said well no that is the witch taking the form of heather in that scene you were talking about curtis okay but there's no real 
solid like this is what the witch is this is right this is the witch attacking them or this is one of her victims attacking them which is i love that yeah, yeah. i think what they do a really good job of is through like the dialogue and stuff especially in like those chase sequences late at night at the end is like telling that there's something there without showing it like physically on camera um like you can hear through the tone and like the words from the, from the actors like what the fuck is that what's going on like they are seeing something right and like obviously there were the things in the trees there were the little stone piles outside their tent um they keep such good like intrigue and mystery and explain like hey something's happening but you don't get the payoff of seeing it which is like exciting and like suspenseful and gripping and terrifying. And right. <laughs> yeah, and terrifying. No, totally. Totally. Um, What's scarier than the unknown? My jokes. Um, <laughs> so I think it's the perfect time to wrap up uh, the film conversation at least and head to uh, the few fun facts and trivia that I didn't get to litter in. Um, if anyone has, unless someone else has something else they want to talk about real quick. Perfect. We will move on to fun facts and trivia. So first fun fact, Heather Donahue's mother received sympathy cards from people who actually believed her daughter was dead or missing still. (laughs) I mean, that's just means that they did a good job with their marketing. Had the desired effect. Yeah. Um, fun fact number two in a scene where the main actors are sleeping in the tent at night the tent suddenly shakes and they're freaking out uh that was actually unscripted the director decided to shake the tent the actors were actually scared in the tent for that scene for that initial scene clark would have pooped himself the film well, only took before the podcast oh that <laughs> explains where you were the film only takes eight uh took eight days to shoot, but it took eight months to edit. That's a lot. Have you that's... ever edited multiple perspectives and synced audio up? It is a nightmare. In the nineties where it's actual film and not digital. Yeah. Yeah. Eight months. You actually though. have to cut the film. It's almost like a month of you know, the, the ratio there is a month per day worth of shooting. That's that's just it's, this is a small crew too. Oh yeah. Two dudes. Maybe a third if, you know, if they're lucky. All right. So uh, fun fact number four. One of the video cameras that they used during filming they had purchased at Circuit City. After they were done with filming, they re- they returned the camera for a refund, which helped make their budget even further. Like it elongated their budget even more. They could use the money <laughs> for something else. Thank you, Circuit City. Out of business. Shout out to Circuit City. Uh, And the last fun fact that I have laying around um, is that the three leads actually believed that the Blair Witch was a real legend during the filming, though, of course, they knew they were going to be filming something based on a fake idea. They didn't know what the idea in the film was going to be fake, which is probably why we got the dude in the cabin killing seven kids and the Blair Witch and, you know, whatever other craziness the Crazy Mary had concocted. Um, but only after the film was actually released, did they discover that the entire mythology was made up by the film's creators. So they were never really sure what wasn't real. So, which probably also helped heighten a lot of those night filming sessions that they did, because if they had ideas that the Blair Witch was possibly real, uh, they were pooping themselves quite extra. Um, yeah, the film used the word fuck 154 times. Just want to throw that out there for anyone who likes those kinds of stats. It's the only reason it was rated R. Is they just say <laughs> the, the word fuck. You get Another one for free. Time. Gotta pay for the rest. Well, well yeah. I mean, this movie, if they I, I think it's more realistic that they actually swear and talk like actual people. Yeah. I mean, I think just a, the the biggest compliment for the movie is just how real it feels. Yep. Right? And that that, you, that shows in the characters and like their interactions with each other that shows in like their you know how much you know how like freaked out and panicked they get and you know 
being lost in the woods, it's got to be terrifying. Like, just got to be terrifying. And then it's just, you know, it was obviously real enough to convince people to send Heather's mom sympathy cards. Like, I think it's the biggest, the biggest compliment of this movie. Totally. That it's real. It's as real as this dog beautiful dog up. I'm holding in my hands. <laughs> Hershey wanted to come say hi. She didn't see everyone the last episode. She's a she foofy poop. Hi, Hershey. <laughs> foofy poof. A good All right. I love labs. It's a good boy. I do too. So I think we've we've kind of talked quite a bit about fun facts and trivia and the movie itself. Yes, So sir. let's move on to a different tangent here. Let's talk about what we've been doing lately. And Mimic, since you are our guest, feel, what have you been up to? Feel free to plug. Feel free to talk about anything that going on in your life we want to hear it uh i've just been playing hades and shopping for condos basically it uh hades by the way if you haven't played it hades is the best game i've played this year uh, everybody's playing hades and i don't know why and i'll find out when i after december because it's just so good mm. it's it's so good it's so good oh my it god it reminds me like and I know it's not, but it reminds me a lot of like the Isaac of Binding, that style right. where you hit a room, do you know, do whatever killing you need to do in that room, story based, whatever it is, and then choose a path to go on to next for whatever room you're going to. And it's like that, you know, never ending chain. Um but it but it's totally different stylistically, story wise. Every time I watch you play it, just FYI, I watch Mimic play, um, usually while I'm doing something else. Um, just because I have kids and whatever, he likes to stream when it's hard for me to watch. That's all I have to say. Uh, yeah, so, man, what's up with that? So a lot of times I'm when I am available to stream, I'm usually, um, managing my family life and watching the stream on the side. So from what I've seen, it is, it is a phenomenally fun looking game. The action in it is insane like i don't i don't know what you're doing half the time because i really don't neither do i played it <laughs> neither do i but it does look like it it is a, a ton of fun so that's cool uh, anything else you got yeah, going on that you want to talk about um so yeah it's uh it's december now so i have i'll probably have a couple of hades videos coming out on the youtube channel uh some rafts some phasmophobia among us all the fun games we've been playing lately um what is your Twitter slash YouTube handle so people can go so visit everything you. Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, uh, are all mimic the idiot at mimic the idiot. Um, so that's fun to check out. I also have been playing some D and D with my friends and we have a D and D podcast. We're in the middle of our second campaign right now or you know, earlier on in the second campaign right now. Uh, it's called idiots rolling dice. Um, at Idiots Dice on Twitter, Idiots Rolling Dice on Instagram, and all your favorite podcasting platforms. Uh, that's really fun. We have like a cyberpunk um, kind of like morally gray post-apocalyptic world that we're playing in right now. Uh, so a lot of fun technology stuff. It's uh, It's pretty exciting. It's my first time ever DMing a campaign, so I'm learning a lot about uh, how to react which is good um especially when my players just basically take a big shit over my next episode of story prep <laughs> that's how it um, works welcome to dming <laughs> you can prep a little you prep enough not too much not too yeah. little and finding that perfect space yeah so well that's been a well, fun challenge. dude that sounds awesome we'll definitely check it out uh links will be in the description of this podcast episode as well so please give a shout out to mimic check out his stuff it's all great i love watching him stream uh curtis what have you been up to uh not a lot uh watching films with the mutant fam horror fam specifically with lisa and the gang uh she she does a great job of of uh watch parties and stuff like that so uh learning and watching how she does it as well because uh the best form of flattery is to also steal people's ideas just kidding um, Plagiarism. Yeah. Why do you think I named myself Mimic? Because <laughs> you're the idiot. Um, that's a terrible. You're a treasure I test. really, I really don't like that you call yourself Mimic the idiot. 
uh, cause I feel you're much smarter than that, but, um, you know, that's, that's for our session, our, our psychiatry <laughs> session later. That's not for right so now. So genuinely um, the name came from like when I was in high school playing Xbox live, I tried to make like an edgy gamer tag or something. Cause like, I was like, ah, oh, I want to be like cool and not a fucking normie and put XX elite sniper kid XX <laughs> as my Xbox gamer tag. Um, and then like when I was, you know, just over three years ago now, when I first started making YouTube videos, I was like, oh, I need some, I need a name. What am I going to na name myself? I have no clue. And I just like defaulted back to that. And um, yeah, that, I mean, here we are. I mean, His Steam is... name is Mimic the Beloved, which yes. I think. I, I Thank, mean... Thanks for doing that for me, Mimic. I love You're seeing welcome. you say nice things about yourself. Yes, that I, I appreciate that. I like it. Um, I think like I've, I've stuck with it and like I like this is a very like I guess personal and tangentially related to me but I like Mimic itself as like a name but the you know so I don't want to like change and like rebrand because I've thought about rebranding a couple times because I don't you know people don't like the idiot part you're not the first person to say that to me Curtis um, but I like because we care damn it yeah problem is there's just like 700 other twitch channels and youtube channels and twitter accounts all just mimic or mimic underscore or whatever so it's just yeah. like i'll keep it as is and then you know readjust logos it's, it's and people trying to to make themselves like you because of how great your content is you see yes admiration yes. um it's all but in all great. seriousness if you haven't i'm gonna say it again if you haven't checked out mimic stuff and you enjoy our show please do He's a friend of the podcast. He's a fr he's a friend in gaming aspect. When we when we do get chances to get together and game, uh, Mimic's a great dude. Uh, we love the work that he does. Um, his podcast is very new. When we're recording this, it's pretty. This season is pretty early on. Um, I think there's only two episodes out so far on iTunes that I've gotten. Uh, should be three. Should be three. Okay, so I'm probably behind yeah. on an episode. I know you were also playing this past week and i had to bounce because i didn't want any spoilers if that was the kind of a thing that could happen on the show there so were I, definitely some spoiler yep, a little bit so of spoilers. i'm glad i left i didn't watch it um feels bad man but at the same time i don't want the story to get spoiled so okay, check his shit out please check his stuff out um yeah. as for me i do the same thing i'm pretty much doing all week i'm I, or every week i'm watching different horror movies researching stuff for the show uh, not to go long-winded, but last, we just finished this past week for the 26 weeks of horror. We just did the letter E. We're coming up on the letter F. So we're looking for suggestions for horror films that start with the letter F for this week. The Frighteners is a great one that I'll probably have in as, as an example. Um, but you, the listeners and the watchers, you guys get to pick what we're what I'm going to watch on Friday, every Friday. So uh, look out for that uh, on Monday. I'll I'll post it. You guys send your ideas, and uh, I appreciate anyone and everyone who who helps. What out movie with did that. you watch for E? For E, uh, I don't know because we're filming this so far in advance that we actually oh, didn't My watch bad. E. No, you're good. <laughs> so um, I tried to totally play that off like this was actually filmed the actual week, but it didn't work. I'll have to figure out if I'm going to keep this or cut it. I don't know. It's pretty funny. You should cut it. Well. It it's fine. I think most people do things in advance these days. I don't think anybody will be upset. Especially with it actually being the week of Thanksgiving. Man, this is going to be a busy week. Yep. All right, Clark, Wait, what have you for, been up for, to, dude? For the scariest movie of all time, E.T. Just saying. E.T. E. Okay. E. Scariest like movie of all time. <laughs> I used to have nightmares about E.T. riding a witch's broom, flying outside my bedroom. And uh, yeah, it was scary. That's that's I was traumatized. That's like I said, we're not quite right. into the counseling session yet. That comes. It's at about twelve thirty. Um, so if yeah. you just hang on for a little bit, hold on to those stories for me, so we can start breaking we, those. Apart. We can't make those public either. Like there's a therapist's client confidentiality oh, we shit. have to maintain. We got about ten minutes. Clark, uh, but... what the hell have you been up to, my man? Yeah. Let's let's talk about less about you guys, more about me. <laughs> okay, so uh, I am giving up video games and movies, except for once, for the podcast for 
uh, it's it's go ongoing at the time you're listening to this throughout all of December. I am currently getting my EMT certification, which I've mentioned before. And in part of that, I'm also trying to build up new hobbies. So the guitar playing, everything, it's all kind of continuously building up. I've stopped the video thing. I've decided to just practice every day instead. I don't really like having myself publicly out there. So um, yeah, that's me and that's my personal life. Continuous self-improvement, nice. my motto. Nothing wrong Otherwise, I think we can plug ourselves here. Uh, we're also going to plug, we've plugged Mimic here, but check him out at Mimic the Idiot, the idiot at uh, twitch.tv as well as YouTube. Check out his Instagram and all of his socials as well. We'll have links for everything Mimic does as well as the idiot to roll dice will also be in the link. And our personal plug is two guys horror pod. That is the number, number two guys horror pod on both Instagram and Twitter. A lot of live watches, live shows Curtis does every Friday. Is that correct, Curtis? That is Every correct. Friday we have a live thing with the Horror Fam, and we tweet out things, have large conversations on Twitter. We really get into it. Instagram's getting a little bit more active. There's going to be a sneak preview whenever we do recordings uh, on there, just kind of poke out. Whenever there's a guest, I'll at them and kind of like raise the excitement a little bit. So... I hope you guys like what we're doing. And we are planning for season three upcoming oh, yes, next sir. year at this moment. And we're going to figure out what we're doing there. And hopefully you like it. I As so. for everything else, I think we're pretty good. If you want to shoot a shoot out to, uh, an email to us, you want to be on the show, you want to say, hey, I want to watch this movie, talk to us. We'll figure something out. Uh, that is the full, fully spelled out two guys and some horror at gmail.com. Also, check our YouTube channel, which is Two Guys and Some Horror. Send us a like. Click on the bell. Get your notifications. All the episodes are currently up there. Curtis did a great job editing and splicing and putting those videos up there. Uh, otherwise, Curtis, Mimic, do you have anything to say before we let the lovely people go? I'll let the guests go first. Be good people. Be good people. Wear I your like mask. That. Wear your mask. <laughs> Enjoy the holidays, but do it safely. All right, everybody. Bye. Bye. Okay, now I'll just capture everything, even the editing process, getting the video set up. That way I could always use this little snippet, you know, this time that we have together, Mimic. I can always <laughs> use it as the as the end credits if we get anything you could done. you could sometimes you have to do what's necessary dude those shades are so nice though <laughs> they're so stupid i love them they remind me of like the old school wrestlers yeah that's kind of what they were inspired by <laughs>